the last few years, I've talked about publishing your Adobe Captivate projects a number of different ways, but one area that I haven't really talked about is publishing your Adobe Captivate project as either an iOS or an Android app. And there is a certain amount of complexity to it. I personally haven't had a need for it too much, but recently I had a client ask about it. So I was able to do a little bit of research with the help of some of my friends over at Adobe. And, uh, but here's the process. So I have a project that I'm just working on right now, not quite finished yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select um, publish from this drop down menu here. And rather than choosing the publish for devices, the, the normal process, I'm going to choose publish for devices and in brackets app, app. So we'll do that. And you're going to see this window here. Now I've already entered in my, my username and password previously for my PhoneGap account. Uh, PhoneGap is now part of Adobe. They have acquired it. And so in all likelihood, your PhoneGap account is very likely to be your Adobe ID, your login and password, uh, the same ones that you use to access Creative Cloud or in this case, Adobe Captivate. Um, if not, you certainly can sign in and register for your, your, your new PhoneGap account. And then of course, follow that process and then log in accordingly. So I'm already logged in. I don't have to do anything at this point. Uh, the very first thing I'm going to do is select whether I'm updating an existing app or creating a brand new app. Uh, for the sake of this video, I'm going to create a new app, even though I've published this one before. And I'm going to select that and then, of course, give it a name. So we're going to call this Evacuation. Its version number will be 0.001. Uh, presumably, I'm going to do this a few times till I get a final version that I'm happy with. And you need to give it a package name. And as far as I've been able to determine, uh, almost anything will work here. And I'm going to hit Next. Now, I'm going to be prompted at this point to choose how I'm going to be packaging this app. If I'm going to package it for iOS, or, or am I going to do this for Android? Uh, if you're going to do it for Android, uh, there's really not much you need to do. You can go ahead and hit the Publish button. But if you are going to publish for iOS, you're going to need uh, a few things. Um, and I'll take you to um, a couple of websites. And I'll include, of course, uh, links to these sites down below in the description so that you can read this for yourself. So the very first thing you're going to need is you're going to need to enroll in the Apple Developer Program. And there's a, a process for doing that that's covered here. Uh, there's some information for you to consider. You know, are you a contract developer and ultimately the app is going to be owned by someone else? Uh, is this going to be your own app that you're going to market and promote yourself? Uh, and things like that. So. Uh, there's going to be some things for you to consider on this page. Uh, this is the enrollment page. And again, like I said, I'll have a link for that down in the description below. The other thing you're going to need is you're going to need a certificate for your developer account. Um, and this page outlines what needs to be done to gain a certificate that you'll use, of course, uh, to develop your, your iOS apps. Um, as far as uh, iOS signing is concerned, once you have that certificate, it's going to be, need to be converted to what's known as a P12 certificate. You can use, uh, once you have your Apple developer certificate, you'll next need to export it to a P12 key store format. And this page outlines that sort of process for you. Again, I'm not an Apple developer, so I won't be going into that great a detail for you today. But suffice it to say, you'll need to complete these steps if you're going to be publishing your project for iOS devices as well. And we're going to, of course, then uh, uncheck iOS and then proceed to publish. So you'll see a publish progress bar, and this will take just a few moments to do. 
Once that's completed, you'll see this window that says Adobe Captivate Publish Completed Successfully and then Download. So we're going to click on that Download and that's going to open a web browser to the PhoneGap website and it's going to include a QR code. So what I recommend that you do is with your, uh, with your Android device that you're testing this stuff out on, you're going to need a QR code. Uh, code reader uh, and there's quite a few to choose from on the uh, Android App Store so just set it up it works with your camera you just simply point that now at your screen and it will capture the web address that's encoded in that um, that link and of course uh, then take your browser to that location And then it's going to prompt you, are you sure you want to, uh, to uh, open this particular type? You may receive a notification that uh, you may have to change some of your security settings to allow uh, third-party applications to be installed. But once you've done that, we can just go ahead and click on Install. And you'll see a progress window that will show the installation process here. Once it's completed, I can go ahead and open that app. And then we'll see my building evacuation course in app format here. And we can just press next. And then, of course, uh, the rest of the pages of the app. And of course, the nice thing about this is it fills the screen. There's no browser window. Uh, like I said, the disadvantage of having your e-learning course as an app is that there's no reporting or tracking available to you. But if the important information is getting that content to your employees, then you've certainly done your due diligence. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com, follow me on Twitter at PaulWilsonLD, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.